Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next Sword Art Online episode review. This one's going to be for Season 1, Episode 21, The Truth About Alfheim. Uh, we are still on Volume 4 of the DVD sets, um, and this time we move on to Volume 4 of the Light Novels, which is where obviously the obviously the Volume 4 of both end the Alfheim Online arc. Um, in this case though, um, the book doesn't pick up basically from where we left off immediately at the same point where the anime leaves off. In the book, you get the the kind of flashback scene that happens in Sword Art Online Extra, the kind of uh, the recap slash slightly new one small news story that you get as that kind of OVA thing for Sword Art Online after the first season. The whole thing about the kind of um, the monster that Lifa and Kirito befriend and then they come back and they use what they learned the first time they met him to come back and um, get the Calibre Sword. Um, I'll, I'll briefly see can I f find um, my thoughts on what, what the name of this thing is. Um, Tonki, that's it, Tonki. So yeah, the Tonki, the kind of god monster thing that they find out underground. Um, so yeah, the, you get the scene where they originally meet him in at the start of this, and then they cut into what happens in this episode of the anime. But in the anime, we see that as a flashback when they're going on the Calibre quest to get Excalibur. Um, that's what I wanted to say. Um, but yeah, this episode I think is good, but it's not one of the best episodes. I think it's it's another one of those episodes where there are a few very important scenes in it, but overall, you know, I wouldn't call it the greatest episode of Sword Art Online. Um, there are some very important scenes, um, which I will talk about, um, in that I think it's a very important episode overall, in terms of set of standing up, where things go, and again, it works for the ro the kind of role uh, slash placement in the series where it takes place um, but yeah the, the main thing to really talk about here is obviously we we arrive at the um this kind of neutral town the biggest town in all of uh alfheim online and you see all of the players all of the different races of fairies interacting the world tree is off in the distance basically their journey is basically at an end all they have to do is travel through the city into the entrance to the world tree and they can try and tackle that. But before we get there, we do get some more kind of character slash emotional things. The way they do this is that basically they announce that there's going to be a system update to the game and that they're going offline for maintenance, so they have to log out. And during this time, we get some important scenes in the real world and also with Asuna, who has to be permanently logged in in Alfheim Online just because she's captive. Um, so I think the most important scene is definitely the fact that Sugaha, when she finds out that Kazuto wants to go and visit Asuna again, basically asks, can she come? And I think this is a big move because uh, the book obviously goes into a little bit more detail, detail on this because it's kind of, this section is kind of told from her point of view. Um, and you get kind of her reasoning behind why she wants to go originally to see Asuna. But even that said, you do get some inner dialogue with her later on when she does actually go to visit Asuna herself. Um, and I, I think it's important just because you understand that she's struggling with these feelings that she has for Kazuto. And the, I think the main thing to say is that she never tries to interfere in their relationship. She understands that there is a connection between those two that she will never have but she wants to see this girl who basically you know has Kazuto's heart basically and see how she will feel when she sees kind of a little bit of their relationship when she sees the girl who Kirito kind of feels about that you know the the that the girl kind of Kirito feels about in the same way that he she wishes that he would feel about her I suppose is the idea and She's using this as a way to kind of get rid of these feelings. And you see that at the very end when she kind of is in the game and, you know, she kind of talks about how she's in love with her brother and she 
wants to kind of bury these feelings deep and one day maybe she'll forget about them and she hopes that seeing Asuna will actually make that happen. So, you know, they, they talk on, on the bus on the way to the hospital, you get some nice a nice scene between the two where you just get some explanation about basically what's Kazuto's situation with school. Like why during this whole, why does he have so much time to play the game right now given that he's back in the real world? And basically the explanation is just that he's waiting for this Sword Art Online um, sur survivor's school to open, basically. And it's going to be this school just for everyone who survived the game to catch you up on the time they missed. And it's a really cool idea because yeah, it makes complete sense in that there basically has been this whole government section of the government um, brought into existence uh, to deal with the fact that this incident happened and they're making stuff happen kind of uh, slowly but surely to basically make amends for what happened and that they can't just leave all these kids out there who've missed like two years of school and they need to catch up so bring them all together it's a way for them to monitor all of the players in terms of their mental health after they've had to basically kill each other for so long and have their lives on the line for so long and um, makes complete sense and just you know you get some nice dialogue between the two of them and you you see kind of their their closeness i suppose as uh, cousins as siblings kind of coming back um but definitely the highlight the best scene in the whole episode is when they actually arrive at the hospital and you get Sugaha's reaction to actually seeing asuna for the first time so obviously she notes how pretty asuna is and stuff like that but you also I think the main thing is just when she sees kind of Kirito holding Asuna's hand and kind of just kind of how intensely he's kind of wishing for her to wake up. She sees at that moment a closeness that she will never have to him and a, a kind of way of treating someone that she will never see herself from Kazuto. And it's just at that moment where she kind of realizes that nothing will ever happen between the two regardless of what just because of how strong Kirito and Asuna's relationship is and again she doesn't try to pursue anything but there's a, there was always like a hope there for her that you know th this would be the time when um basically she forgets about her feelings but in many ways all seeing this kind of showed to her was how much she does actually love her brother and stuff like that and that it just brings up that she will never actually have kind of what deep down she actually wants because of how close the two of them are and again she has to kind of hold it back because um she knows that it, it would kind of mess up the, everyone's relationships if she was to really talk about this so she kind of has to deal with this internally and so you know after the scene in the hospital where you know she she wants Kazuto to be happy. She wants Asuna to wake up, of course. And um, she goes into the game, and she you you get her full feelings coming out in the game, which which I thought was a very interesting dynamic because it allows you to have another one of these scenes. But this time, rather than it being Kazuto and Sugaha, it's Lifa and Kirito who, at this point of the story, still don't know that they're each kind of one and the same. Um. And you have the scene once again where this time kind of Sugaha brings her real life feelings from the from the real world into the game and Kirito again kind of has to be the one to kind of comfort her which is a contrast to in the real world where Sugaha comforted uh, Kazuto in like one of the earlier episodes of this arc um, and this time he's basically telling her that you know like even though this is a virtual world you can still let your real feelings out if you treat it that way. And again, this is the whole theme of this entire show, entire arc, the whole idea of Kaiba as a villain, the whole contrast between having Sugo as a villain is regard to how each of them sees the virtual world. Yeah, Sugaha, Asuna, Kazuto, Kaiba all see the virtual world as this place where it is a new world, as a place where you can get away from the real world but it is still a new real world and what happens in there is real but it's real in a slightly different way to the way real life is but you know your actions do have consequences and stuff like that whereas 
Sugo and his scientists that we see in this episode treat it purely as anything that you do in the virtual world doesn't matter. They they don't see the seriousness. Um, and, and you saw that earlier on in like one of the scenes with Asuna where obviously Sugo is suggesting some pretty uh, awful stuff and Asuna is just like, no, um, you may not think it's real, but I do. Um, and she obviously has learned this from Kirito that what you experience in the virtual world is real you, you it's all about how you the way you treat your time in the virtual world and stuff like that so and um, it all kind of starts to link together very nicely but um obviously they they kirito helps kind of console lifa who says you know you know i just have my heart broken and stuff like that and i think at this moment you begin to really see her falling for kirito in the game because she realizes that Kazuto is just too far away from her at this as, at this point. Um, and you kind of understand why she's doing that. Because she realizes that Kazuto has Asuna. And she has been enjoying her time so much with Kirito. Um, and so when you get to like one of the final scenes. And Yui senses Asuna's presence nearby. And she just starts yelling out about mommy and stuff like this. And Kirito takes off like it's finally going to happen. She doesn't know what to think in that, oh, this must be his girlfriend. Because if she's calling you daddy and her mommy, that must mean you're together. She's not really thinking that because she doesn't know the full details about why Yui calls him daddy in the first place. But there's definitely like a question mark coming up for her and you're gradually beginning to see these kind of like the reveal is going to happen very soon that it's finally all going to come out that Kazuto is Kirito and Sugaha is Alifa and stuff like that so very nicely and then while this is happening you have the kind of side plot of the episode which re relates I suppose to the overall name of the episode the truth about Alfheim being that Asuna obviously has her escape she tries to make her escape and find a panel to log out of the game with on her own it shows her strength you know that she's doing this on her own she's doing some investigating and obviously she walks into this facility and basically comes across the brain uh, manipulation the emotion manipulation i suppose it's memory slash emotion manipulation that sugo is testing as this new technology that he's going to sell to make a lot of money and he's using the other sword art online people who haven't woken up as test subjects for this, changing their memories through kind of dream manipulation and stuff like that. Um, and obviously you get Asuna talking here about how that's illegal, tampering with people's minds like that. And again, it's just this other thing, like he is kind of um, distorting the kind of purity of the virtual world that he doesn't care what he does in there because it's virtual and stuff like that. And, you can see that from the way the two scientists that he has there take on these weird kind of slug-like forms. They're not themselves. They're kind of in this form that allows them to manipulate the kind of test subjects a lot easier. S Sugo thinks he's a king in the game and he's all powerful and stuff like that. He kind of does a little bit of role playing rather than actually playing as himself. Um, whereas um, Asuna obviously just plays the game as herself um, and treats it as just another version of real life um, and that's one of the key kind of things going on in this scene and um, of course she's captured and it's a scene that a lot of people basically bring up as like a reason why they don't like this a lot because of the kind of implications of like tentacles and her being held and stuff like that and definitely there's a suggestion of that and you know you can't really dispute that at all but at the same time, given what this show kind of does at, at certain times with some of the characters, like the way they were kind of using Sakia and Alicia Liu at the end of the last episode and, and stuff like that, um, they could have gone much more down the kind of road of trying to kind of play on the fact that, hey, Austin is kind of naked and stuff like that, but they don't really do that. They more play up the fact that, Hey, she's just been captured just before she has the chance to escape. She's just found out the full details of basically what Sugo is doing. And she's so close to escaping and you just want her to kind of get out of there and she's been caught. Um, and they definitely played up more from the fact that 
I don't want this to happen to Asuna rather than like, hey, look what we're going to do to Asuna. It's just kind of like, okay, you hint at it. And then just before they go too far, she fights back. She bites the, the first tentacle and um, basically that whole implication of what's going to happen stops. And it's just, okay, her, her escape attempt has failed, but she knows a lot more information. And she cleverly saw a key card nearby and used her foot to kind of pick it up. And so, so she has this kind of um, control panel key card that she can use somehow. We don't know how that's going to be just yet. But obviously with the setup that Kirito now knows where Asuna is and Yui and what happens in the next episode... You see where the kind of connection begins to come. Asuna helping Kirito to come and save her. That it's not all Kirito doing all of the work. Asuna has done some of the kind of investigative stuff and has basically given, found the means to fully free her in the end, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, again, you know, it, it's it's definitely not the most ideal way to use the character in this arc, but given that they had to have her be kind of trapped in the game the whole time. I'm fairly pleased with using her enough as it is, showing that she's remaining strong despite the crazy situation that she's in, despite how like awful and creepy Suga is being, that she's still trying to escape, that she still has hope of rescue and stuff like that. It's, um, it, it shows strength as a character, again, not ideal, but it's um, reasonably well done for what it actually is. Um, and, and and again, they, they could have gone much further, but uh, they didn't. Like, given some of the like positions they had her in, like upside down and stuff like that, I thought they were fairly... They held back, like, a lot with regards to what they could have done, given, like, what she's wearing. And I definitely uh, i am kind of happy that they held back and didn't go all out and stuff like that. It does make one of the scenes in, like, I think it's the second last episode all the more shocking when it does happen but um we'll get to that when we get to it um, either way um an episode that's good because of a few key scenes I, I do like the progress of Sugaha being a big focus of this episode having a few really important scenes just with regards to her feelings about Kazuto coming back into play a lot more and Especially that scene when she visits Asuna in um, where she sees Asuna for the first time going to visit her in hospital. That is a really strong scene and just her at the end of this episode basically just before Kirito and kind of Yui run off basically deciding that you know like I have to kind of put this kind of uh, these feelings deep down and hope that one day I forget about my feelings for my brother and stuff like that. Um, and you, you see the kind of pain that she's going through and that I think it's the one thing that people I think miss is that she again she doesn't ever try and actively do anything to the Kirito and Asuna relationship it is purely her dealing with her feelings which she knows will never be returned and what she does about that and what she does about that is kind of try and kind of put those feelings more towards Kirito in game but that backfires on her because of the reveal that's going to happen I think next episode so um uh, I think it's, it's just a really well written arc overall but uh, we'll get to that more as we cover the last few episodes but um for now that's been the review thanks for uh watching and bye